Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven. Today, we're going to talk about the relationship of sensor size to image noise. There's a lot of good and there's some bad information going around in terms of what causes this. If you want to misunderstand what I'm about to tell you, it's absolutely possible and easy for you to do. So I want you to watch this video from the angle of trying to understand the concept, because if you're struggling with it and you come away with, with the knowledge, everybody's gonna be better off and we're, we're, everybody's gonna get along, everything's gonna be just fine. Let's focus on the what, not the who. When we talk about image noise, we're talking about the grain that you see, especially in low light situations. It's like salt and pepper, you can kind of see it. The image isn't clean in terms of color. We're all familiar with it as photographers. And there are many videos that I could make about what causes different kinds of noise. There are many variables. Uh, it can come down to sensor design, pixel pitch, the interpolation. So when we look at all the variables that can create image noise, there is one that dominates more than any others, and that is the signal to noise ratio. When we're talking about the signal in something like a radio, that is when you're dialed in to the right radio station. You can hear the music, you can hear the guy speaking. But if we turn that knob a little bit and we're no longer dialed in, we hear the static in this background, it's hissing, it's sort of background noise. That is noise, and the signal of the radio station coming through strong usually drowns it out. So we don't even hear that noise when we get a really good signal. So the signal to noise ratio is the most important thing when it comes to image noise that we're seeing in our images. Sometimes this is referred to as the amount of light that hits the sensor. The amount of light that hits the sensor to me is understandable although it's very easy to misunderstand in terms of what we're talking about. And I think it's easier to think of it in terms as the number of photons. The reason why we should look at it as the number of photons is because that is the statistically most important thing for a camera when we're creating an image. Okay, statistics, sampling population. So if I was to go out and to ask two people if they liked hamburgers, it would be inappropriate for me to assume that the entire state of Hawaii likes hamburgers. I would have to sample a larger population. So when we're shooting in very low light situations, we are dealing with a limited number of photons hitting the sensor. This is why it's more important in low light. If we're shooting on a bright sunny day and we're normalizing or printing up to the same picture size, it's not gonna matter as much. But if you're shooting in low light where the samples of photons are lower, this is going to be much more important. When we hear the term more light, it can mean a couple things. For one, we can be talking about brighter light, which deals with exposure, or we can be talking about more area. And I wanna discuss the second one mainly. As an example, if I was to walk out into the middle of the state of Texas and to hold up my pinky, which is about one centimeter by one centimeter squared, if I held that up in the sky and I took a light meter reading, for the amount of light hitting the top of my pinky, and I measured it, and then I, I lowered my pinky and did another measurement, you could definitely expect that those measurements would be identical. Absolutely, positively, they're gonna be the same. If I was to get a magnifying glass the size of Texas, and I was able to hold it at a distance away from my pinky in such a way that it would all come together at a single point, one centimeter by one centimeter, and I was to take a light meter reading, the reading would absolutely be different, okay? The light meter would be incinerated. It'd be like a giant laser beam frying the state of Texas, at least where I'm standing. Even though the exposure would be the same no matter where I held my one centimeter squared pinky up in the air, all over the state of Texas, that exposure at that one point is definitely going to be the same. There is a ton more photons hitting the state of Texas than my little pinky. So we're thinking about the number of photons, even if the exposure is the same, the number is going to be different when you start talking about larger surface areas. For those of you who are interested in the math of counting photons and how it relates to noise, definitely check out the articles in the description. This is how it works. Noise is calculated by taking the square root of the number of photons hitting the sensor. This can then be used to calculate the signal to noise ratio, which is defined as the number of photons divided by image noise, which was also the square root of the number of photons. So as an example, if I had nine photons hitting a sensor, we could expect the noise measurement 
to be 3. Why? Because the square root of 9 is 3. And so when we look at this as the ratio of signal to noise, this is a ratio of 3 to 1, which can also be expressed as 3. So therefore, the signal to noise ratio can be expressed as the square root of the number of photons hitting the sensor. Let me give you another example. If you have 10,000 photons hitting a sensor, the noise measurement would be 100. Why? Because 100 is the square root of 10,000 photons. So 10,000 divided by 100 is a signal to noise ratio of 100. And so this calculation works. You just simply take the square root of the number of photons and that gives you the signal to noise ratio. So now I wanna show you how this works on a camera when we're talking about area increases only. Part of the problem is that much of the discussion is based on a pixel to pixel basis instead of the entire sensor basis. And I think this is where most of the confusion is. Sometimes I like to use the word sensor to describe an individual sensor element instead of pixels. Pixels are what we see in pictures. Sensors are the things on a sensor that create the pixels. Say for example, I have nine photons hitting a single sensor camera. Now we've already determined that this has a signal to noise ratio of three for that one individual sensor camera. Now let's say we create a four sensor camera. Each of those four sensors are exactly the same size, exactly the same construction with the same software, the same filters, everything is the same, literally. There's just four of them now, so there's more surface area. Each of those four sensors receive nine photons for a total of 36 photons between all of them. The square root of 36 is six, right? 36 divided by six, and so we get the signal to noise ratio of six. So this four sensor camera, even though each sensor is capturing the same amount of photons, the signal to noise ratio has doubled. Now imagine we do this for a 24 megapixel camera, each sensor capturing the same number of photons. Nine times 24 million is 216 million. We can take the square root and you can see the dramatic increase in the signal to noise ratio. So we can see that by increasing the surface area without changing the number of photons per pixel or per sensor, we can dramatically change the total signal to noise ratio based on surface area only. This is the heart of the matter. More surface area in total means more photons. More photons means greater signal, which is the primary variable in image noise, and the greater signal means the greater signal to noise ratio, all other things being equal. So if we were to sit down and actually do the math on a full frame sensor, 24 millimeters by 36 millimeters, it's 864 millimeters. And then when we do the math on a micro four thirds sensor, which has an active area of 17.3 millimeters by 13 millimeters, we get a total surface area of 225 millimeters squared. So, 864 divided by 225 works out to 3.84. So a full frame sensor is about four times larger in terms of surface area than a micro four third camera. We could also look at iPhones. iPhones are much smaller, 5.6 by 4.2 millimeters as an example, 23.5 millimeters square, much smaller surface area. So in even these three cases, it's the same thing as the Texas example. If you were to get the right exposure on the sensor in each of those cases is that as you increase the surface area, you need more photons for the proper exposure. Now, something that's often missed in this discussion is the lens that's being used on that particular sensor. And of course, we're making the assumption that we're taking a picture of the same thing. So let's say we have an F 1.8 lens for a smartphone, micro forward third camera, and a full frame camera. Each of those lenses are designed specifically for the sensor size. And even though they are all F 1.8, their construction is different because they project different size images. F 1.8 is simply a ratio between the focal length divided by the measure of the opening. 
We cannot take a 1.8 smartphone lens and use it on a full frame camera. The lens has to be specifically designed for a full frame sensor. We can't take a Micro Four Third f1.8 lens and use it on full frame camera either. The lens has to be specifically designed for the full frame sensor. And in order to project an image that will fit, the lens opening has to be much larger. This is the reason why larger sensors are capturing more total photons. It's the equivalent lenses for a particular f-stop is relatively much wider. Otherwise, we could use a smartphone and micro four third lenses on full frame cameras without any loss of light, and that is impossible. Now, I don't want to get into the topic of equivalence, but I will give you one more example that will help you understand conceptually why talking about individual pixels is far different than talking about the image as a whole. Let's pretend, for example, I took a picture of a clown's face on a full frame camera, and I was to divide that picture into four parts. I'm taking the bottom right hand quadrant and making my own image. I'm just cropping it out and making my own image from it. If I were to take that cropped image and compare the noise found in the bottom right quadrant of the full frame camera, it would absolutely be reasonable to expect that the image noise in both of these would be the same because they are identical, right? So the question then comes is what if I had a micro four thirds sensor with these exact same design, the same pixel pitch, talking about the size of the sensors and how they're spaced out, the same interpolation, the same camera manufacturer, you know, however the sensor's made, everything is identical. The only difference is one is larger and one is about a quarter the size. So if we were to have a camera do that and take the exact same picture, same lens, same light information, same photons, and we were to compare that with the quadrant we took away from the full frame camera, yes, we would expect those to have the same noise performance. Why? Because everything is identical. The same light, the same information, the same sensor design, the same filters, assuming the same delivery of photons, everything is the same in these two comparative examples in terms of physics. The problem is this is not how it works in real life. We're taking a picture of a clown's face. So in order to take a picture on a, of a clown's face on a micro four third camera, the image projected onto the sensor is going to be much smaller. So that's what I'm saying is that if you have a full frame image of a clown's face, there are more photons. And what happens is the camera is going to be interpolating. It's doing a statistical measurement. And we're talking about four times the amount of sensors that are dealing with color information as the micro four thirds. So even though the exposure is the same as a whole, there are a lot more photons hitting the larger sensors, just like that Texas example. So that is the heart of the matter, is there is more light hitting larger sensors. It's not necessarily related to the intensity as it is the coverage. You have to have more photons to cover the state of Texas than you do your pinky, otherwise the magnifying glass wouldn't do anything. So that's on the conceptual level. There are tons of great articles online that confirm this, point this out. I'll put those links in the description if you guys wanna check them out. Pixel pitch does come into play, uh, and there's other factors that come into play in terms of ISO noise, but it is not the main determinant. It is the signal to noise ratio, and we're talking about the signal, it is the sampling of the number of photons. Larger sensors have larger lenses in order to project the image circle, and that's why they receive more light. In any event, I hope that answers your questions about large sensors being cleaner. Thank you guys for watching. I look forward to your comments in the description below. If you're struggling to learn your camera, check out some of my training videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.